Good morning, friends. It's good to see you today. I was thinking that as I drove up to Hanson this morning that I would see some snow all over the ground, but I couldn't find any, so I don't, I don't know what really happened. I saw something on the news, but maybe that was fake. Anyway, it's so good to be with you on Communion Sunday and to welcome friends that are worshiping with us on Facebook Live. Uh, as we... Uh, Look ahead this week. Tomorrow there is going to be a private graveside service for our good friend Barbara Meggs. And uh, I will uh, bring your greetings and appreciation for Barbara at that time. Uh, if you had not heard yet, on Tuesday there is a national election. Um, I'm sure some of you have already voted. Perhaps some of you have not yet. So, uh, what I always do is encourage people to vote, to stand up for your own personal convictions, even if they differ from others, and to continue to live as a Christian in graciousness with those with whom you disagree. I don't think I have anything else uh, in terms of dates and details today, so Listen with me to uh, what I think are particularly appropriate words for an election week from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save, when their spirit departs, they return to the ground, and on that very day their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. I'd like to invite my friend Pangra to give us our opening prayer this morning. At this time, we have a brief video uh, highlighting the ministry of Operation Christmas Child. Let us watch it together. It all goes great with a glass of milk. Packing an Operation Christmas Child shoebox. Okay, let's be honest. Packing an Operation Christmas Child shoebox can go great with anything. It's so that other kids can learn about Jesus. Praise the Lord! Thank you. 
box. Simply print off your tracking label to see where the destination of your gift will be. And don't forget, it's important to pray for the child that is receiving this gift. Because packing the box is a simple way to share the gospel with kids all around the world. Participate in the ministry of Operation Christmas Child, and as Wanda just highlighted, two weeks from today, November 15, is the day to bring your completed box uh, back and ready to go. In my own experience, both toothpaste and chocolate can make excellent stocking stuffers if you want to use those items for something. But uh, follow the, the little guy's advice in terms of what's, what's appropriate, and again, we thank you for your generosity. Well, at this time, let's join our hearts in prayer. I'm inviting you to sing in your heart only at this time the hymn, Like a River Glorious. time for us to unite our hearts together in prayer. I want to say how glad I am to see our friend Lisa Marks with us today because Lisa has just had a tough, tough time with lots of discomfort and she's going to be having a major procedure of injections on Thursday of this week and we want to keep her in our prayers. Um, many of you have been very kind to ask about our granddaughter Daisy who broke her arm and uh, she's coming along, the pain has improved a great deal, she's in good spirits. It is still possible after further evaluation that she may have to have a bone marrow procedure, but she may not, we don't know yet, but if, if that happens, I'll keep you uh, posted as time goes on. You know that I always like to focus on the good news, and uh, I'm not Good news for me is to see our good friends, the, the ones I can't help call the Kelly girls and their mom, Diane. 
And uh, I, it's just, as long as you know me, that's, that's what you are to me. Isn't that terrible? But uh, so glad to see them with us today with what's been a challenging year. Um, but other good news today. How can you give thanks for God's goodness to you? Frank. Cheryl, uh, when I just spoke to her a minute ago, she said that the Wi-Fi on uh, Facebook is coming across really good, and the service is live, and it's good. Okay, we're, we've been fighting some technical and physical difficulties on our broadcasting. Hopefully today it all goes well. Any other good news? You can't, you can't be too dour on me today. I've got, I've got to get one more. Frank's got another one. Throw us on to the election and get it over. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think everybody would say uh, amen to that. You know, t talking of the election, you know that whether it's Wednesday morning or Thursday morning or a week, I, you know, who, I, who knows what, what's going to be. But there are, and, uh, when this is over, there's going to be a lot of disappointed people, no matter what happens. And our task, again, as Christian brothers and sisters, is to... Find a way to love, and be gracious, connect, and be unified with those who put their trust in Jesus Christ and with others who Jesus calls us to love. Did you have something, Ken? Yeah, I just pray for peace. Absolutely. For peace, for freedom from violence, for, for Christian character. We can't control what other people do. We can only control what we ourselves do. And if we do it. That, that is always our hope. And uh, so I trust that that will be our character no matter who you choose to vote for on Tuesday or, or have voted for. Um, are there some other concerns and worries that you'd like to lift into God's hands this morning? Um, oh, yeah, I, I don't have my glasses on, and so, you know, you all look alike to me. But... Marie's sister Debbie, who's had an ongoing battle with, with her foot. She had had some victories uh, this fall, but uh, moving again into a, a tough time and a regimen of medication, so we, we lift up Debbie today. Other concerns? Okay, everybody is particularly quiet, but I bet you have things on your heart and feel free to give them to God. Well, and I just want to say, as I see my friend Judy, how glad I was to hear from worship last week, how well things went for her good buddy Jeff. And, uh, you know, you, you worry about things that are coming up, and, and then when they go well, you just say, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Well, let us unite our hearts together in prayer. Gracious God, we certainly echo together with our friend Frank our desire to get past this election season. It's just been exhausting and overwhelming, frightening, hopeful. Your family comes at it from so many different angles. And that is why we ask you to help us first and foremost to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. There will be many, even within the Christian family, who disagree with us about policy issues, personality issues, and, and on it goes. Remind us, Lord, that in your heavenly kingdom, there will not be a section for Republicans and Democrats or people of this perspective and that one. But we will be one with Jesus Christ at our center. Remind us of that during this week of so much emotion. Whatever each new day brings, we know that you are not sitting in suspense, that you are always our sovereign, that you never lose hold of your world or your people, that you are always in Jesus, the author of hope. 
and we thank you for that and will continue to hold on to that reality whatever each new day of this week may bring our gracious god we thank you for your ongoing faithfulness to our church family and for our good friend barbara meggs a hundred and four years old almost a hundred and five who has gone to be with you we thank you for all the love that our church family has shown to barbara during these recent years and uh, her time at wingate and we ask that you would be with her family tomorrow bless them fill them with thanksgiving and we thank you for a life well lived our gracious god we lift up into your healing hands all of those that we've mentioned Anne marie's sister debbie my granddaughter daisy our good friend lisa and others who may be going through times of struggle and trial physically or emotionally right now hold on to them and use times of trial to help us mature and to continue to trust and to grow in Jesus Christ and show those of us who are friends and family the things that we can do to be the most supportive our gracious God it is communion Sunday a special day for us bind us together in hearts of love and gratitude show us the risen presence of your son Jesus who is with us empower us by that spirit that always moves us to grow and mature and we ask that you would reveal to us those places in our lives where we need to say that we are sorry where we need to make changes where we need to grow reveal those to us as we come around your table today help us to express our sorrow and to know the fullness of your forgiveness we know Jesus is here with us in our church our lives our nation and our world and we continue to pray using his unique words saying our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen with you a couple of weeks ago we began the reading of the famous parable of the prodigal son or the lost son the story of the son who wants all of his now and takes off and lives the high life and then things don't go so well and he comes trotting back home and his dad is just overwhelmed to see him and throws a big party I saved the second part of the parable for today uh, it's interesting that a story that you would think concludes with a happy happy ending in Jesus's telling actually doesn't conclude with a happy ending and today we focus on the second part of the parable the story of the lost son's older brother so I'm reading again from Luke chapter 15 and we think that the the big party the fatted calf having been killed is going on music who knows what else and this is where we pick it up at verse 25 meanwhile the older son was in the field when he came near the house he heard music and dancing so he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on your brother has come he replied and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound well, the older brother became angry and refused 
to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him? My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. May God add his blessing to this reading of his word and apply it to the way that you and I live our lives. I think that this older brother felt kind of taken for granted. Did you ever feel taken for granted? I do sometimes. I almost every day, with just a few exceptions, make the coffee at our house. <laughs> and I set it up, I, I do a very good job with it. And I, I can't even remember getting a thank you for that. I put away my own laundry in the right drawers, the right place, neatly, ready to go, ready to wear when I change my clothes once a week on Sundays. <laughs> Nobody, nobody says, thanks so much for doing your part. We, we all feel a little taken for granted sometimes, maybe, maybe even at work over the years. Some, somebody you worked with ended up taking credit for something that you did. That, that happens in working environments. Well, here we have a, a brother that feels taken for granted, and doesn't this happen in families? There's kind of a traditional understanding of birth order, that the older children are often thought to be the, the super responsible ones, the ones that don't ever take a risk, that, that you know, try to please mom and dad and do everything right, and it's, and it's the younger one, like in our story, who's the mess up. Okay, well, that, that was kind of true in my family. What, what about your family? My brother is 10 years older than I am. Unbelievably responsible, hardworking, thrifty, you name it. You know, always wanted to do just what mom and dad wanted. Now, I mean, I wasn't a terrible kid, but by comparison, uh, I'm kind of the other, the other way. And, and what really got me when you talk about resentments that can take root in a family you know, my brother, 10 years older, he goes off to college. I'm in third grade or something. And every time he came home for a holiday, Thanksgiving, Christmas, summer vacation, whatever, from college, you'd think the king had arrived. You know, and, and, and my mother is asking me to do this, do that, chore, to, to get things ready for this brother. Huh, my goodness. Well, have you had any of that in your family? Did you ever feel that? See, you don't have to answer. I know you did. I know some of you did, because that's, that's just the way, the way it is. You know, you remember the Smothers Brothers line, Mom always loved you best. And, and this is the dynamic that Jesus understood in this parable. Now, this, this older brother feels taken for granted. He's not a bad guy. He's responsible. He's working the family farm. He's taking care of his money. He's being responsible to his dad, doing what's expected, what's asked. And uh, all of a sudden, he hears the strains of music and the sounds of dancing, and he thinks to himself, what in the world is going on? My dad's not really a party person. 
And when he finds out that his younger brother is being celebrated in this way, his younger brother who wasted everything and did things he would never think of doing, and he is furious. He is furious. Can you hear it in his voice? His father comes out to try and calm him down. And he says, this son of yours, see what he's doing? At that moment, he is literally disconnecting himself from his own brother, as if they're not even related. And he's also kind of disconnecting himself from his dad. His dad, who is so excited, so thrilled to have the younger son home and to be able to celebrate him and welcome him, no matter where he's been or what he's done. It's a, it's a real parable that reoccurs in our own lives. Because when we think that we've tried to live up, or tried to be good, and then we see somebody else getting something that we don't think they deserve at all. It can kind of tick you off. You know, sometimes in families we can be so close to each other and yet so far apart. You know, I've already said it. It even happens in marriages. And you know I'm teasing Jane. Even though when she does nice things around the house, I'm always the first one to praise her and say thank you and uh, express my appreciation. But be that as it may, she does that for me too on occasion. Well, what this older brother hasn't done is something that might be wise for you and me to do as we take communion today as we get ready to, to vote or think about the vote that we've made, and that, that is to take stock of our own lives, to really take, take stock, not of other people, but of who we are, what kind of person we are as a Christian, how we function. The, the world is full of quote-unquote good Christians. You've heard that phrase, he or she is such a good person. Christian. Well, that's, that's kind of what the older brother, I think, thought he was. Not he wasn't a, a Christian in that context, but a good man of God, a good Jew, perhaps. That's Jesus' context. And, you know, just uh, the kind of person that's comfortable with other good people. But what happens is sometimes good Christians can be so good that they forget how to be gracious to those that they don't think measure up, or those that don't agree, or those that do things that they see as wrong, or those that have hurt them. I mean, most likely in this story, I figure this older and younger brother probably had, had enough tension even before the young one left home. But the truth of the matter is this, and that this is how we can take stock just as I would have encouraged this older brother to take stock, is to think about how unbelievably good God is to us. What unbelievable blessings that have been bestowed upon us who sometimes think we're just good Christians. I thought about this last night on Halloween when both of my granddaughters came over in their costumes and uh, to show them to Grandma and Grandpa and I took a picture and we gave them a little candy. Uh, but all I can think about, and I know I can echo Jane here, and this is not teasing, it is just how unbelievably good God has been to us in giving us these two beautiful girls, not to mention our own daughters. And you know that, I know you know that in your family, because I've heard you talk about it so many times when you talk about your children and grandchildren and, and people that mean so much to you. Yes, some of them have messed up along the way, and some of them have caused pain and heartache, but be that as it may, how good God has been. How, how many times have we seen situations in our congregation of illness and struggle and worry and seen the presence of Jesus be there through it and get us through it. How many times have we seen that? It's a great day to, to take stock 
and to, and to end that taking stock with an overwhelming attitude of gratitude, which, you know, when we feel that, when we see how good God has been to us, it, I think it helps us to cut a little slack for other people. You know, the, the brother here, he just, he just couldn't cut any slack. He just felt so taken for granted that he was filled with nothing but resentment. How many times have we done something we wish we hadn't done and have known or tasted something of God's forgiveness? How much that means to be able to wake up and live another day in spite of the ways that we've messed up. So I just invite you as we come around our communion table today, and, and you know we have invited you to bring your own elements, and, and if you forgot or weren't able to bring them, um, Jesus has no problem with making his communion real and alive to you in your heart. But uh, it's a time to, to look not at how other people have done or what other people think or how they may have messed up in our eyes. It's a great day to, to take stock of ourselves, to not break that relationship with God who loves us so much, but to reaffirm it and to say thank you and to know what a, what a privilege it is to have been born and brought into the world and have the opportunity to love others and be loved by them. What a privilege. So I invite you to take stock along with this older brother, to share a little love with some of those younger brothers and sisters in our lives that get on our nerves sometimes, and sometimes those they might be our older ones, who, you know, whoever, whoever. Uh, some of those Democrats that get under our skin, some of those Republicans that just make us climb the walls. I mean, wh wherever you're coming from, let us focus and take stock on ourselves and how good God has been to us. The God who says to us, you've always been mine. Everything I have is yours. That is the love of Jesus Christ for you and for me. Amen. It is time to remember the generosity of our church family with our morning offering. You know that the basket sits back there and, and you have been making ample use of it. So I just always say thank you. And, you know, it's not a burden but a privilege to give and support a kingdom that knows no end, and which is a kingdom, as, as Ken mentioned to us earlier, that when, when we seek to be Christ-like, it does have an impact on other people. So thank you for your generosity, and let us thank God again in prayer as we receive our morning tithes and offerings. You, Lord, are the ultimate giver, you have given us so much, the gift of life, the gift of family. For those of us here in the United States, the gift of a great nation, the gift of salvation, and of Jesus Christ who died on a cross for us, the gift of the promise of heaven, and healing that is eternal, not temporary. The gift of worship. The gift of hope, even during times of pandemic and struggle. And we ask, gracious God, that you would give us eyes to take stock and to see those gifts each new day, and to remember them before we lash out, before we criticize, before we mock, do all those things we can be tempted to do. Fill us with gratitude and then to be givers. And the gifts we've brought this morning we entrust to you in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare to come around the table of Jesus Christ again, let us sing together in our hearts when peace like a river. Thou hast taught me to 
say, it is well, it is well with my soul. you to come around the table of the Lord Jesus Christ. I always say it's not important that you be a member of First Baptist Hanson or anything like that. The only requirement for this table is that you know him, that you have entrusted your life into the hands of Jesus. And as such, we do bid you On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Let us unite in prayer. Brokenness is all around us, Lord. We feel like our nation is broken. We feel like sometimes our very soul is broken. Help us to see today that Jesus was willing to be broken, that we might be made whole. We seek the wholeness that your spirit brings. And may it find expression in the way that we care for others and seek to minister to their brokenness, no matter who they are or where they come from. Help us to love not only our families, not only our own nation, but to love others everywhere with the love of Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. We remember that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Feast on him in your hearts by faith.
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had blessed it, said, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray one more time. Our God, we do not fully appreciate the cost of our salvation, but we thank you that you love us that much, that you are always ready to forgive when we turn to you, that you want to use us in the world to bring good news. We ask that when someone sees us coming, that their hearts might say, here comes good news, because Jesus is at work in us. We thank you again for the forgiveness and the mystery of the way it comes to, it, to us by the sacrifice of his blood. This drink reminds us, not of violence, but of love. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus also said, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Drink with thanksgiving for Jesus. As you make use of the offering basket this morning, that's also the place to put a contribution for our deacons offering, our other special communion day offering, used by our deacons to meet emergency needs that come to our attention. And I often say, if you know of someone within the church family or the extended family that could, could use a little encouragement in one way or another from that fund, please speak to me or Pastor Bruce or one of the deacons, and let us know what that concern is so that we can take a look at it. The disciples, after that last supper, sang a hymn. Let us, together in our hearts, blessed be the, the tie that binds. This election week with a prayer in your heart or on your lips for both President Trump and former Vice President Biden with the secure trust that whatever we face each day in our nation that because of what Jesus Christ has done the power of your spirit Lord it will be there 